Okay, hello students. Today we will be jumping into the very, very uh, distant past, uh, namely to the year 712 AD, um, and one of the first um, official documents of the Japanese ever produced, named the Kojiki, and the English translation is often translated as the uh, account of ancient matters. There are several other translations as well. And there's a new translation which came out a few years ago from Columbia Press. We won't be reading that edition. Instead, we will be reading uh, one of the early, not the earliest, but uh, a translation by a guy named Philippi. His last name, I forget what his first name, Gerald or something. Not Gerald, forgive me, Mr. Philippi. <laughs> For, uh, mis yeah, for forgetting your first name, but it's uh, by Donald Philippi, that's what it is. Uh, Donald Philippi, I think, came out in the mid-1960s, and um, we won't be reading the entire work for this class, but we will uh, read excerpts, some of the more famous, salient, important passages from the Kojiki, and in your PDF files that you all have, uh, the original Japanese is on the right side, and the English translation by Philippi is on the left side, and you will note that it's all kanji. There's no hiragana or uh, katakana at this point. And it's all written in kanbun for the um, sort of a Chinese style for the uh, main sort of narrative prose passages. And then whenever uta or waka uh, Japanese style poem appears, it's also written in uh, the manyogana style, which means that it uses the kanji to uh, say the waka, but the kanji for these uta are only used um, for their phonetic uh, properties uh, rather than their uh, semantic uh, meanings and so forth. Okay, but we'll go over all that in class and um, I will also make a study guide at some point uh, that gives you some of the basic information about this text, where it comes from, who compiled it, and over how, how much time and uh, what sort of sources it draws from, if any, and the general background stuff that we will need to delve more deeply into this text. So in uh, this um, video, we're just going to do a recitation of the Philippi translation uh, excerpt of it, and you can follow along with your PDF file. And rather than uh, having to listen to my uh, ugly voice for the next 30 minutes or so, I'm going to have my assistant, uh, Nicole Ellis, uh, read um, the Philippi translation. Okay, so I, shall, I will now turn it over to Nicole. Okay, put it on scroll here, make sure it's recording. Recording in progress. Okay, and now here we go, and I will get out of the way. The Koziki, starting from the beginning. And now you can, uh, here we go, there you are. Okay. Okay. The beginning. When heaven and earth first appeared, there came into existence in the plane of high heaven a deity named Lord Midst of Heaven God. By the way, let me just say one thing. Ooh. It's translated here as deity. Um, the more recent translation by, uh, what's his face? I forget his name. Uh, Philippi? No, the, the, the other newer guy. guy. Uh, it translates uh, kami. In Japanese, it's kami or kamigami for this word. Uh, the old translations have deity or gods. Uh, the new translation has uh, kami tra translated generally as spirit. So keep in mind whenever you hear deity, the spirit might be the more appropriate translation for kami a uh, very important word in japanese culture obviously okay so sorry to interrupt but I'll try to speak again. then high creative force god and then divine creative force god all these three deities came into existence as single deities and their forms were not visible so just read deities as kami actually kami? kami or kamigami okay next when the land was young resembling floating oil and drifting like jellyfish a thing sprouted forth like red like reed shoots and from this, there came into existence a kami named Splendid Reed Shoot God and then Eternally Standing Heaven God. These two kamigami came into existence as single kami, and their forms were not visible. The five kami in the preceding section are the separate heavenly kami. Next came into existence Eternally Standing Land God and then Abundant Clouds Field God. These two kami also came into existence as single kami, and their forms were not visible. Then there came into existence clay male god and then his spouse, silt female god. Next, emergent form god and then his spouse, living form god. Next, great male organ god and his spouse, great female organ god. Next, ample face god and then his spouse, awe-inspiring god. Next, izanagi, he who invites god, and then his spouse, izanami, she who invites god. Or, or kami, sorry, god. Kami. The kami in the preceding section, from eternally standing land kami through iz izanami, are known collectively as the seven generations in the age of the kami. Solidifying the land. 
At this time, the heavenly kami, acting jointly, commanded the two kami, Izanagi and Izanami, complete and solidify this drifting land. Giving them the heavenly jeweled spear, they entrusted the mission to them. Thereupon, the two kami stood upon the heavenly floating bridge and, lowering the jeweled spear, stirred, churning the brine with a resonating sound, and when they lifted it up, the brine dripping down from the tip of the spear piled up and became an island. This was Onogoro, self-congealing island. Descending from the heavens to this island, they erected a heavenly pillar in a spacious palace. At this time, Izanagi asked his spouse, Izanami, How is your body formed? She replied, My body, formed though it be formed, has one place that is formed insufficiently. Then Izanagi said, My body, formed though it be formed, has one place that it is formed to excess. Therefore, I would like to take that place in my body that is formed to excess and insert it into that place in your body that is formed insufficiently and give birth to the land. How would this be? Izanami replied, This would be good. Then Izanagi said, Then let us, you and me, walk in a circle around this heavenly pillar and meet and have conjugal intercourse. Having thus agreed, Izanagi said, then said, You walk around from the right, and I will walk around from the left and meet you. After having agreed to this, they circled around. Then Izanami said first, Oh, how good a lad. After which Izanagi said, Oh, how good a maiden. After each had finished speaking, Izanagi said to his spouse, It is not proper that the woman should speak first. Nevertheless, they commenced procreation and gave birth to a leech child. They placed this child into a boat made of reeds and floated it away. Next, they gave birth to an island of foam. This also is not reckoned as one of their children. Then the two, dis two kami consulted together and said, The children that we have just born are not good. It is best to report this matter to the heavenly kami. They then ascended together and sought the will of the heavenly kami. The heavenly kami thereupon performed a grand divination and said, Because the woman spoke first, the outcome was not good. Descend once more and say it again. Then they descended again and walked around the circle, walked around once more in a circle around the heavenly pillar as before. Then Izanagi said first, Oh, how good a maiden. Afterward, his spouse Izanami said, Oh, how good a lad. After they had finished saying this, they were united and bore, a ch as a child, Awaji Island. Next, they bore the double island of Io. This island has one body and four con countenances, each a separate name. Thus the land of Io is named Darling Woman, the land of Sanuki is given Grain Spirit Possessed Man, the land of Awa is called Great Food Woman, the land of Tosa is called Fierce Spirit Possessed Man. Next they bore the triple island of Oki. When they finished giving birth to countries, they gave birth to, to Kamianu. Then they gave birth to the swift bur burning fire Kami. As a result of giving birth to this child, Izanami's genitals were burned and she lay down sick. In her vomit there came to existence the metal mountain kami. Next in her feces there came into existence the clay earth kami and the clay earth kami. Next in her urine there came into existence the god of goddess of irrigation and the kami of agricultural creation. The child of this deity was the goddess of food. Thus at last Izanami, because she had given birth to a fire kami, divinely passed away. A grieving Izanagi buries his spouse and kills the fire kami, whose birth caused Izanami's death. Still grieving, Izanagi decides to visit Izanami in the land of Yomi. Visit to the land of Yomi At this time, Izanagi, wishing to meet with his, again with his spouse Izanami, went after her to the land of Yomi. When she came out of the door of the hall to greet him, Izanagi said, O oh, my beloved spouse, the lands that you and I were making have not yet been completed. You must come back. Then Izanami replied, saying, How I regret that you did not come sooner, but I have eaten at the hearth of Yomi. But, oh, my beloved husband, how honored I am that you have come here. Therefore I will go and discuss for a while with the kami of Yomi my desire to return. Pray do not look at me. Thus saying, she went back into the hall, but she was gone so long that Izanagi could no longer wait. So he broke off one of the large end teeth of the comb he was wearing in his left hair bunch, lit a fire, and entered the hall to look. Maggot squirmed and rolled. On her head sat great thunder, on her breast sat fire thunder, on her belly sat black thunder, on her genitals sat crack thunder, on her left hand sat young thunder, on her right hand sat earth thunder, on her left foot sat sounding thunder, 
and on her right foot set reclining thunder. Altogether, eight thunder kami were there. Upon seeing this, Izanagi became afraid and turned and fled. Then his spouse Izanami said, He has shamed me. Right away she dispatched the hags of Yomi to pursue him. Then Izanagi undid the black vine securing his hair and flung it down. Immediately it bore grapes. While the hags were picking the grapes and eating them, he fled. Still they pursued him. Next, Izanagi pulled out the comb he was wearing in his right hair bunch and flung it down. Immediately, bamboo shoots sprouted forth. While the hags were pulling the bamboo shoots and eating them, he fled. Later, Izanami dispatched the eight thunder kami and a horde of warriors of Yomi to pursue him. Then Izanagi unsheathed the ten hands long sword that he wore at his side and waved it behind him as he fled. The pursuit continued. When Izanagi reached the foot of the steep pass of Yomi, he took three peaches that were at the foot of the pass and ambushed his pursuers. They all turned and fled. Then Izanagi said to the peaches, Just as you have saved me, if in the central land of the reed plains any of the race of mortal men shall fall into painful straits and suffer in anguish, please save them also. Saying this, he bestowed on the peaches the name Ohokamo Zumi, Great Divine Spirit Kami. Finally, his spouse Izanami herself came in pursuit of him. Then Izanagi picked up an enormous boulder, requiring the strength of a thousand men to move, and blocked the steep pass of Yomi. They stood facing each other, one on each side of the boulder, and broke their troth. At this time, Izanami said, O oh, my beloved husband, if you do thus, I will each day strangle to death one thousand of the populace of your land. To, that, to this, Izanagi said, O oh, my beloved spouse, if you do thus, I will each day build fifteen hundred birthing huts. This is the reason why one thousand people inevitably, di inevitably die and fifteen hundred people inevitably are born every day. Therefore, the deity Izanami also called the great deity of Yomi, and because she joined in the pursuit, she is called the great Kami who lays the road. The boulder that caused the steep pass of Yomi is called the great Kami who repels enemies on the road. It is also called the great Kami who blocks the door of Yomi. This steep path of Yomi is said to now be the Ifuya Pass in the land of Izumo. At this point, Izanagi said, I have been to a most unpleasant land, a horrible, unclean land. Therefore, I shall purify myself. Arriving at the plain of Awaki by the river mouth of Tachibana in Himuka in Tsukushi, he purified and exercised himself. When he flung down his stick, there came into existence a kami called Cain in the Road Bend. As Izanagi cleanses himself, many, die, many kami are born. Then when he washes his left eye, there came into existence a kami named Amaterasu, the great heaven-shining kami. Next, when he washed his right eye, there came into existence a kami called Tsukuyomi, the moon-counting kami. Next day, when he washed his nose, there came into existence a, a kami named Susano'o, ferocious, virulent male kami. The fourteenth kami in the preceding section from the many affliction spirit through Susanoo, are kami born from bathing his body. At this time, Izanagi, rejoicing greatly, said, I have borne child after child, and finally, at l in the last bearing, I have obtained three noble children. Then he removed his necklace, shaking the beads on the string so that they jingled, and giving it to the deity Amaterasu, he entrusted her with a mission, saying, You shall rule the plain of high heaven. Next he said to the deity Tsukuyomi, entrusting him with this mission, you shall rule the realms of the night. Next he said to the kami, Susanoo, entrusting him with this mission, you shall rule the ocean. Although Susanoo is given the, role, the rule of the ocean, he weeps and howls for his mother and neglects the realm entrusted to him. Angered by Susanoo's disobedience, Izanagi expelled Susanoo. Susanoo and Amaterasu At the time, Susanoo said, in that case, before I go, and I will take leave of the great deity Amaterasu. When he ascended into the heavens, all the mountains and rivers roared, and all the land trembled. Amaterasu heard this, was startled, and said, It is certainly not any good with any good intentions that my brother is coming up. He must wish to usurp my lands. So, undoing her hair, she wrapped her hair in bunches. She wrapped long strings of myriad magatama beads in her hair bunches on the left and right of her head, on the vines securing her hair, as well as her left and right arms. On her back she bore a thousand arrow quiver, at her side she strapped a five hundred arrow quiver, and also put on a magnificent bamboo arm cover. Shaking the upper tip of her bow, stamping her legs up to her very thighs in the earth in the hard earth, 
and kicking the earth about as though it were light snow, she let out a tremendous war cry and stamped her feet with fury. Thus waiting for him, she asked, Why have you come? Then Susano'o replied, I have no evil intentions. It is merely that the great Kami Izanagi divinely inquired about my reaping and howling, so I said that I was weeping because I wished to go to the land of my mother. Then the great Kami said, You may not live in this land, and he expelled me with a divine expulsion. Therep whereupon I came upon intending to take leave upon my departure. I have no other intentions. Then Amaterasu said, If that is so, how am I to know that your intentions are pure and clear? Then Ustasanao replied, Let us swear oaths and bear children. Then they each stood on the opposite sides of the se se Serene River of Heaven and swore their oaths. At this time, Amaterasu first asked for the ten hands long sword that Susano'o wore at his side. Breaking the sword in three pieces, she rinsed them in the heavenly well, and the jewel-like ringing resonated, resonated clearly, chewing them to pieces and spat them out. In the misty spray there came into existence a kami named Lady Mist, also named Lady of Oki Island, next Lady of Ichiki Island, and also Lady Sayori, next Lady Gushing Water. Susano'o asking for the long strand of myriad magatama beads wrapped, around, wrapped on Amaterasu's left hair bunch, rinsed them in the heavenly well, the jewels ringing, resonating clearly, chewed them to pieces, and spat them out. In the misty spray there came into existence a kami named, Truly I have one victorious, virulent spirit, heavenly, majestic, green force. Again he asked for the beads wrapped on her right hair bunch, chewed them to pieces, and spat them out. In the misty spray there came into existence a kami named Heavenly Grain Spirit. Again he asked for the beads wrapped on the vine securing her hair, chewed them to pieces, and spat them out. In the misty spray there came into existence a kami named Heavenly Male Child. Again he asked for the beads wrapped on her left arm, chewed them to pieces, and spat them out. In the misty spray there came into existence a kami named Vibrant Male Child. Again he asked for the beads wrapped on her right arm, chewed them to pieces, and spat them out. In the misty spray, there came into existence a kami named Wondrous Spirit of Kumano. Altogether, there were five kami. At this time, Amaterasu said to Susano'o, The latter-born five male children came into existence from my possessions and are therefore naturally my children. The first-born three female children came into existence from your possessions and are therefore your children. Thus she determined the allotment of the offspring. Then Susano'o said to Amaterasu, it was because my intentions were pure and clear that in the children I begot I obtained graceful maidens. By this it is obvious that I have won. Thus saying, he raged with victory, breaking down the ridges of Amaterasu's rice paddies and filling up the ditches. Also he, def he defecated and strewed his feces about the hall where the first fruits were tasted. Even though he did this, Amaterasu did not reprove him, but said, What appears to be feces may be what my brother has vomited and strewn about while drunk. Also, as to his breaking down the ridges of the rice paddies and filling up the ditches, my brother must have done so because he felt the land was being wasted. Even though she spoke thus in remedy, his misdeeds did not cease but became even more flagrant. When Amaterasu was inside the sacred weaving hall, weaving hall, seeing to the weaving of divine garments, he opened a hole in the roof of the weaving hall and dropped into it a heaven, the heavenly dappled horse, which he had skinned backwards. The heavenly weaving maiden, shocked at the sight, struck her genitals against the shuttle, and died. Now Amaterasu, seeing this, became afraid, and opening the doors of the heavenly rock cave, went in and shut herself inside. Then the plain of high heaven was completely dark, and the central land of the reed plains was entirely dark. Because of this, constant night reigned, and the cries of the myriad kami filled the air like flies in the summer, and all manners of calamities arose. Then the eight hundred myriad kami assembled in a divine assembly on the banks of the Se Serene River of Heaven. They called upon the kami profound thinker, child of the kami high creative force, to think. They gathered together the long crying birds of to 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 Tokoyo, the everlasting realm, and caused them to cry. They took the heavenly hard rock from the upper streams of the Serene River of Heaven, took iron from the fragrant mountain of heaven, and sought the smith heavenly Mara, and commissioned stone-cutting woman to make a mirror. They commissioned, forefather of the jewel workers to make long strings of myriad magatama beads. They summoned heavenly koyoane and futotama, the magnificent jewel kami, to remove whole the, sh the shoulder bone of a male deer of the fragrant mountain of heaven, and take heavenly hakahaka ha wood from the fragrant mountain of heaven and perform divination. 
They uprooted the very roots of the flourishing Masakaki tree of the fragrant mountain of heaven. To the upper branches they affixed long strings of myriad magatama beads. In the middle branches they hung a mirror many spans wide. And in the lower branches they suspended white strips of nikite cloth and blue strips of nikite cloth. Magnificent jewel carried those various objects as solemn offerings. Heavenly Koyane intoned a solemn litur liturgy. The deity, hev the kami heavenly powerful handed male, stood concealed beside the door, and Uzume, the heavenly woman with hair piece goddess, bound up her sleeves of the cord of the heavenly Hika higake vine, tied around her headband, head headband of the heavenly masaki vine, and bound together bundles of sasa leaves to hold in her hand. Overturning a bucket before the door of the heavenly rock cage, she stamped thunderously and, becoming divinely possessed, exposed her breast and pushed her skirt down to, down to her genitals. Then the plain of high heaven shook as the eight hundred myriad kami laughed at once. At this time, Amaterasu, thinking this strange, opened a crack in the door of the heavenly rock cave and said from within, Because I have shut myself in, I thought that the plain of high heaven would be dark, and the central land of the reed plains would be completely dark. Why is it that Uzume, heavenly woman with hair pieces, sings and dances, and all eight hundred myriad kami laugh? Then Uzume, heavenly woman with the hair piece, said, we rejoice and dance because there is, there is here a kami superior to you. While she was saying this, heavenly Koyane and magnificent jewel brought out the mirror and showed it to Amaterasu. Then Amaterasu, thinking this more and more strange, gradually came out of the door and approached the mirror. Then the kami heavenly powerful handed male, who had hidden himself, grasped her hand and pulled her out. Immediately, magnificent jewel extended a sacred rope behind her and said, you may not go back behind this. Then Amaterasu came forth. The plain of high heaven and the central land of the reed plains naturally became light. At this time, the 800 myriad kami deliberated together and imposed on Susana o, o a fine of a thousand platters of restitutive, restitutive, restitutive goods. In addition, they cut off his beard and the nails of his hands and feet and handed him, had him exercised and expelled him with a divine expulsion. Susano O slays the eight-tailed serpent. Therefore, Susano O was expelled and descended to the upper reaches of the He River in the land of Izumo, to a place called Torikami. At that time, a chopstick came flowing down the river. Thinking there were people upstream, Susano O set out in search of them. He came upon an old man and an old woman with a maiden between them, crying. He asked them, Who are you? The old man replied, I am a child of an earthly kami, the great kami of the mountains. My name is Rubbing Feet, my wife's name is Rubbing Hands, and our daughter's name is Hair, Col Hair Comb Field. Susano all asked further, Why are you crying? Rubbing Feet replied, We originally had eight daughters, but the eight-tailed serpent of Koshi has come every year and eaten them. We are crying because it is now time for him to come again. Susano all asked, What is his appearance? Rubbing feet replied, His eyes are red like ground cherries, and his body has eight heads and eight tails. On his body grows moss and cypress and cryptomeria trees. His length is such that he spans eight valleys and eight mountain peaks. If you look at his belly, you see that blood is oozing out all over it. Susano O said to the old man, Will you give me your daughter? Rubbing feet answered, Odd as I am, I do not know your name. Susano O replied, I am the brother of the great kami Amaterasu and have just descended from heaven. Then rubbing feet and rubbing hands said, If that is so, we reverently present her to you. Then Susano O transformed the maiden into a hair comb, which he put in his hair. He said to rubbing feet and rubbing hands, Distill thick wine of eight full brewings, build a fence, and make eight doors in the fence. At each door set up eight woven platforms, and on each of these platforms place a wine barrel. Fill each barrel with a thick wine of eight full brewings, and wait. They made the preparations as he has instructed, and they waited. The eight-tailed serpents came indeed, and the old man had said, as the old man had said. Putting one head into each of the barrels, the serpent drank the wine, and then, becoming drunk, he lay down and slept. Then Susano'o unsheathed the ten hands long sword that he was wearing at his side, and hacked the serpent to pieces. The He River ran with blood. When he cut the serpent's middle tail, the blade of his sword chipped. Thinking this strange, he thrust deeper with the stump of his sword until a great sharp sword appeared. He took this sword out and, thinking it an extraordinary thing, presented it to the great kami Amaterasu. This is the sword Kusanagi, 
grass feller. Thereupon Susano O sought a place to li place in the land of Izumo to build his palace. Arriving at Suga, he said, Coming here, my heart is refreshed. Sugashi. And in that place he built his palace and dwelled. Therefore, that place is still called Suga. When this great deity first built the palace of Suga, clouds rose from that place. He composed a song which said, And I'll read the last line here. Yaku mo tatsu izumo yae gaki tsumma gomi ni yae gaki tsukuru sono yae gaki yo. In the eight cloud rising, Izumo, an eight fold fence, to enclose my wife, an eight fold fence I build, and oh, that eight fold fence. Then he summoned rubbing feet and said, Be the headman of my palace. He also bestowed upon him the name Palace Master of Ina Inada, Kami of Suga, with manifold spiritual powers. Then he commenced procreation with hair comb fields. I'm going to pause it. The Heavenly Descent Then Amaterasu and the High Creative Force Kami commanded the heir apparent Heavenly Grain, saying, Now it is reported that the pacification of the central land of the Reed Plains has been finished. Therefore, descend and rule it as you have been entrusted with it. Then the heir apparent Heavenly Grain replied, saying, As I, I, was, as I was born preparing to descend, a child was born. His name is Ninigi. This child should descend. The child was born of his union with the daughter of the high creative force Kami. Thereupon, in accordance with his words, they imposed the command on Ninigi. The land of the plentiful reed plains it has been entrusted to you as the land you are to rule. In accordance with the command, descend from the heavens. Then, as Ninigi was about to descend from the heavens, there appeared in the myriad heavenly crossroads a, a Kami whose radiance shone above through the plain of high heaven and below through the central land of the reed plains. Amaterasu and the high creative force Kami commanded heavenly woman with hair peace, saying, Although you are a graceful maiden, you are the type of Kami who can face and overwhelm others. Therefore go alone and inquire, Who is here on the path of my offspring descending from the heavens? When she inquired, the reply was, I am an earthly Kami named Saruta Biko. I have come out because I have heard that the offspring of the heavenly Kami to descend from the heavens, and I have come forth to wait so that I might serve as his guide. Then assigning roles to the heavenly Koyane, magnificent jewel, heavenly woman with hairpiece, stone cutting woman, and forefather of jewel workers, altogether five clan heads, they had then descend from the heavens. Amaterasu gave to Ninigi the myriad Magatama curved beads, the mirror that had been used to lure her, as well as the sword Kusanagi, grass feller, and had also sent along the profound thinker D Kami, the heavenly powerful handed ma male Kami, and the heavenly rock door youth Kami. Then Ninigi was commanded to leave the heavenly rock seat. Pushing through the myriad layers of heaven's trailing clouds, pushing his way with an awesome might, he stood on a flat floating island by the heavenly floating bridge and descended from the heavens to the peak Kujifurutake of Mount Takayehiho of Himuka in Tsukushi. Ni Ninigi said, This place is opposite the land of Kara. It is a land where the morning sun shines dis disc discreetly, a land where the rays of the evening sun are brilliant. This is a most excellent place. Thus saying, he rooted his palace post firmly at the bedrock below, raising the high of the cross beams into the plain of high heaven itself, and dwelled there. Ninigi met a lovely mating at the cape of Kasasa. Kasasa, Kasasa. He said, Whose daughter are you? She replied, I am the daughter of the great mountain Kami, and my name is Lady Divine Atta. I am also called Lady Tree Blossom. Again, Ninigi asked, do you have any brothers and sisters? She replied, I have an elder sister, Lady Rock Eternal. Then he said, I wish to marry you. What is your wish? She replied, I cannot say. My father, the great mountain Kami, will say. Then he sent permission for her father, the great mountain Kami, and her father rejoiced greatly and gave in addition the elder sister, Rock Eternal Princess, and had hundreds of tables laden with gifts and presented to Ninigi. But when Ninigi saw the elder sister, he was afraid because of her exceeding ugliness and sent her back. He kept only the younger sister, Tree Blossom Princess, and had conjugal intercourse with her for one night. Then the great mountain Kami, shamed because Rock Eternal Princess had been sent back, sent word. The reason I offered both my daughters together was this. I presented them swearing an oath that if he should take the Rock Eternal Princess, the life of the child of the heavenly Kami, 
even through even though the snow should fall and the wind should blow whatever would be ever like a rock and would continue eternally firmly without being moved and also that if he should take tree blossom princess the child would flourish just as the blossoms of the trees flourish however now that he has returned rock eternal princess and kept only tree blossom princess the life of the child of the heavenly kami shall continue only for the interval of the blossoming of the trees for this reason until this day the emperors have not been long lived later tree blossom princess came forth and said i am with child and now the time of my delivery is near i say this because it would not be fitting for the child of the heavenly kami to be born in secret then ninigi said can tree blossom have become pregnant after only one night this is not my child surely it must be the child of an earthly of an earthly kami then tree blossom replied if the child i bear be the child of an earthly kami then it shall not be born safely if it be the child of the heavenly kami then it shall be safe when she built a palace many yards long without a door entering this palace she spread clay to close it up and when she was about to deliver the child she set fire to the palace and gave birth the child born as the flames were burning ferociously was named ho Didi, the fire shrine lord the child born next was named ho suseri the fire raging lord the child born next was named ho ori fire fade lord luck of the sea and luck of the mountain thereupon fire shine lord as luck of the sea hunted the wind finned and the narrow finned fish and fire fade lord as lord of the mountain hunted the coarse furred and the soft furred gain then luck of the mountain said to his elder brother luck of the sea let us exchange our luck although he repeated this request three times his elder brother refused finally however he was able to get his brother to consent to the exchange then when luck of the mountain was fishing with the luck of the sea he was unable to catch even a single fish and he lost his fish hook to the sea then his elder brother luck of the sea asked to have his fish hook back saying the luck of the mountain is your own luck luck the luck of the sea is my own luck luck let us now give each other back his own luck then the younger brother luck of the mountain replied when i fished with your fish hook i caught not a single fish and i finally lost it in the sea however his elder brother stubbornly insisted even when the younger brother broke up a ten hands long sword and made it into five hundred hooks as compensation he would not accept them again he made a thousand hooks as a compensation but he still would not accept them saying i still want my original hook then when the younger brother was weeping and lamenting by the seashore the tide path god came and asked why are you weeping and lamenting he who is high as the sun in the sky luck of the mountain replied i borrowed my elder brother's fish hook and i lost it since he asked for his hook i replayed him with many hooks but he will not receive them saying i only want my original hook that is why i am weeping and lamenting then the tide path god said i will give you good counsel he then made a small boat of closely woven bamboo put luck of the mountain into this boat and instructed when i push this boat free continue to sail for a little while then there will be a very good path of tide in the sea continue going on this path and you will come to a palace made of it with the scales of fish the palace of watatsumi the sea god when you reach the gate of this kami there will be a luxuriant katsura tree next to the well at its side if you climb to the top of this tree the daughter of the sea kami will see you and give you counsel thereupon luck of the mountain went as he was instructed and everything he was exactly as he had been told he climbed up the katsura tree and waited then the serving maid of toyotama lady precious soul daughter of the sea kami brought out a fine jar to draw water at which time she noticed a light in the well looking up she saw a lovely young man she thought this exceedingly strange at this point luck of the mountain seeing the serving maid asked her to give him some water the maid drew water put it into the fine jar and offered it to him then instead of drinking the water he unfastened a jewel from his neck put it into his mouth and spat into the fine jar thereupon the jewel stuck fast to the jar and the maid could not remove it therefore she presented it to lady toyotama with the jewel attached inside seeing this jewel she asked the maid is there perhaps someone outside the gate the maid replied there is a person in the katsura tree next to the well he is an exceedingly lovely young man much nobler than our master he asked for water and when i offered him offered water to him he did not drink but spat this jewel into the jar since i was unable to remove it i brought it with the jewel attached inside to present to you then lady toyotama thinking this strange went outside to take a look quite taken at the sight they gazed at each other to her father she said there is a noble person at our gate then the sea kami went out for himself to take a look and said 
This is he who is high as the sun in the sky, son of he who is high as the sun in heaven. Then he brought him inside, spread out eightfold layers of sealskin carpets, and then spread out eightfold layers of silk carpets above them, seated luck of the mountain on top of these, set out a hundred tables laden with gifts, prepared a banquet, and gave him his daughter Toyotama in marriage. Therefore he lived in, his land, in this land for three years. At this time, luck of the mountain remembered the things of the past and sighed deeply. Toyotama heard this sigh and said to her father, In the three years he has lived here, he has never sighed, yet last night he sighed deeply. What could be the reason? Then her father, the great Kami, asked his son-in-law, According to what my daughter has said this morning, in the three years that you have lived here, you have never sighed, yet last night you sighed deeply. What is the reason? Also, what is the reason for your coming here? Then Luck of the Mountain told the great god in detail about how his older brother demanded the fish hook that had been lost. Thereupon, the sea kami summoned together all the large and small fish of the sea and asked them whether any fish had taken the fish hook. Then the myriad of fish said, Recently the sea bream has complained that a bone is caught in its throat and it cannot eat anything. Certainly this fish has taken it. At this time they looked in the sea bream's throat and found the fish hook. Therefore they took it out, washed it, and presented it to Luck of the Mountain. At this time the great sea god, Watatsumi, instructed, When you give this hook to your elder brother, you should say, this hook is a gloomy hook, an uneasy hook, a poor hook, a dull hook. So saying, hand it back to him behind your back. Then if your elder brother makes rice patties on high ground, make yours on low ground. If your elder brother makes rice patties on low ground, make yours on high ground. If you do this, since I control the water, within three years your brother will be poverty stricken. If he becomes bitter and angry and attacks you, take the tide raising pearl and cause him to drown. If he pleads for mercy, take the tide ebbing pearl and cause him to live. So cause him anguish and suffering. Saying so, the sea god gave luck of the mountain the tide-raising pearl and the tide-ebbing pearl. Then he summoned together all the crocodiles and asked, Now, he who is high as the sun in the sky, son of he who is high as the sun in heaven, is about to journey to the upper land. Which of how you will escort him and re return to report, in how many days? Then each of them answered, numbering the days in accordance with their length. Among them, the one-tailed one lame crocodile said, I will escort him and return in one day. Then the sea kami said to the one lame crocodile, In that case, escort him. Do not give him cause for fright while crossing the sea. Thus the sea god put luck of the mountain on the crocodile's neck and sent him off. As had been promised, the crocodile escorted him home in a day. When the crocodile was about to start back, luck of the mountain removed the danger he had, the dagger he had been wearing and fastened it around the crocodile's neck before sending it off. Therefore, this one length crocodile is now called the Kami who holds a dagger. Then Luck of the Mountain returned the hook to his brother exactly as he had been instructed by the sea Kami. From that time onward, his elder brother became poorer and poorer. His disposition became more violent, and he came to attack Luck of the Mountain. Whenever he was attacked, Luck of the Mountain took out the tide-raising pearl and caused his elder brother to drown. Then when the elder brother pleaded for mercy, he took out the tide-ebbing pearl and saved him. So he caused his elder brother anguish and suffering. At the time, the elder brother prostrated himself and said, From now on, I shall serve you day and night as your guard. Thus, to this day, the elder brother's descendants, the Hayato, still serve the emperor by performing these drowning motions. At this time, the daughter of the sea god, Toyotama, came forth and said, I have been with child for some time, and now the time of my delivery is near. I thought that it would not be fitting for the child of the heavenly kami to be born in the ocean. Therefore I have come forth. Then by the edge of the beach, a part parturition hut was built and thatched with cormorant feathers. But before the parturition hut had become completely thatched, the urgency of her womb became unendurable and she entered into the par parturition hut. As she was about to be delivered of her child, she said to her husband, All persons of other lands, when they bear their young, revert to the form of their original land and give birth. Therefore I too am going to revert to my original form and give birth. Pray do not look at me. Then thinking her words strange, she watched in secret as she was about to give birth. She turned into a giant crocodile and went crawling and slithering around. Seeing this, he was astonished and ran away. Then Toyotama, learning that he had been watching, felt extremely shamed and, leaving, the child she, leaving behind the child she had born, said, I have always intended to go back and forth across the pathways of the sea. However, now that my form has been seen, I am exceedingly ashamed. Then closing the sea border, she went back into the sea. For this reason, the child whom she born is called Heavenly Male Brave of the Shore. 
Nevertheless, although she was angry with him for having looked at her, she was able to understand to subdue her yearning and sent her younger sister, Lady Tamayori, to nurse the child, entrusting her with a song, which said, Beautiful are red jewels, even their cord seems to sparkle, but I prefer pearls, for the awesome beauty of your pearl-like form. Then her husband replied with the song, As long as I have life, I shall never forget my beloved, with whom I slept on an island where wild ducks, birds of the offing, came to an island. Luck of the mountain dwelled in the palace of Takachiho for 580 years. His tomb is west of the of Mount Takachiho. After this, Heavenly male, brave of the shore, takes his aunt, Lady Tamayori, as his wife, and she gives birth to three, three children. The eldest crosses over to the eternal land, Tokoyo. The second enters the ocean to follow his mother, and the third, Kamu Yamato Iware Hiko no Mikoto, Divine Yamato Iware Male Lord, becomes the first emperor of Yamato, Jimu. Jim, Jimu. From here on, the Kojiki is divided into chapters of the succeeding imperial reigns. Translation adapted from Donald Philippi. Okay, thank you very much, Nicole. Um, I have been teaching all day uh, since first period, so I'm a bit brain dead today. I think I accidentally said Nicole Ellis. It's Nicole Ellison, right? Correct? Yes. Okay. Yes. Apologies for the mistakes. <laughs> uh, very nice reading, very smooth reading. Uh, I appreciate it. And there's uh, obviously a lot to unpack about these, all these uh, names of the various kami and the place names and various other particularities of culture and so forth. And the first emperor of Yamato, namely uh, uh, Emperor Jinmu and so forth. There's a lot of things we have to go over and we will do it in class. And I will make a study guide about, uh, with a list of all these things that you need to know in order to understand this text at some point in the near future. And I'll make another video for that. Can you hear me? I forgot to speak into the microphone. <laughs> um, and that is all. I will see you all in class. Thank you for listening. Goodbye. Say goodbye. Bye bye. <laughs> Thank you, Nicole. Very nice. Okay. Awesome. I'm like right in front of the microphone. Yeah. Thank you.